be involved with jobs where the, you know you have to use your mind and not doing something in a rote fashion, I well, guess. Well, so. uh, part of it is, is some people really like to know the answer. And so they, <laughs> they have chosen through their lives to be in situations where it was clearer. And they get, they get nervous when they leave that kind of bounded kind of environment. But if you don't want to experiment in the workplace, you could do it. Kids are a good exposure to that. I mean, you like, you know, try to try to make that one work. So any yeah. kind of exposure to young people or things that have have Stretch opportunities for ambiguity, yeah. you know, wait, get on a hotline and you don't know who's going to call. My friend runs suicide prevention. You know, be on a hotline and oh, let wow. somebody call in and like talk to somebody. Wow. Well, you have to go live. That kind of stuff. Actually, I mean, some of the executive work I do, it, I actually in, encourage people to take improvisation courses. Oh, really? Yeah, because like if you can if you can be responsive in the moment, then you can like do things in other in other settings. One of the trends is we've already discussed the second middle age, but that our lives are getting more complex <laughs> and the workplace is getting more diverse. Yeah. Can you talk about those two. Let's talk about X and Y and boomers and cross cultural. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about California. Let's talk about working in, you know, in the twenty four seven world. Uh, part of that is is very exciting, and I think that's that's the fun part about being in this market, this coastal market, because we we face out to Asia and the world, and so we have a lot more diversity um, than say places that are much more homogeneous. Do you think that makes a, a f it would seem that it would make an extra challenge for managers? to deal with a 22-year-old oh, person absolutely. from China, a 55-year-old person from Sunnyvale. Yes. A, uh, how, what are the, <laughs> the challenges of being able to even pronounce somebody's name? Absolutely. I mean, how how absolutely. would they be able to do all well, this? Well, they're going to need some help. <laughs> That's one of the <laughs> Is things that, that, that they call you? <laughs> well, uh, it's kind of because we're, we're starting to say, what are, what's, how do you prepare these emerging leaders? How do you prepare people who can Ooh, deal like with this? Leader. How can you, you know, because it's so, I just finished working on a merger from an Israeli company and a Silicon Valley company. So we've got that wow. going on. We've got eight hours of time difference. And we have in the workplace in Silicon Valley, seven different cultures. So one of our funniest things, wow. one of our funniest things was, you know, the people in Israel thought that the people in the U.S., actually the people in the U.S. thought the people in Israel were yelling at them because they were <laughs> typing in capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and that, that they were typing in capital letters because they were in their second language, which was not English, and they were they they could see it better f with their way of understanding. That almost sounds like the the American that goes someplace and I just know. keeps speaking louder I in know, English so that I you'd know. understand it. You so speak I, French. I know. think that's going to keep us very invigorated. I think there's no manager that I've met lately who isn't trying to sort of figure that out. Now, the one that concerned me though is this mm -hmm. last one, and I'd like to have you talk about highly disengaged yeah. people like. And you were talking about layoffs and disillusion. And there are people that have the maybe a chip on their shoulder, but it's a it, they've been through the war zone. No, no so. they they have they have earned it. I mean, they have been they have been their loyalty has been um, toyed with. Mm -hmm. You know, they they committed they committed, and it's just like somebody in a personal relationship. You know, they're never going to yes, love again. They're right. never going to commit again. And and people who have get like that in the workplace. I don't think that's really what disengaged is about. Okay, I think so what is it? That I think it's more about how it's like is the work meaningful? Does somebody kind of know I'm there? Does somebody care about me and talk to me? I mean, people people want these re-engagement. There's a lot of people out there frankly measuring engagement and saying it's it's low. They've got Gallup, they've got Towers Pair and there's a number of people who prove define engagement. Uh, the way we define engagement is we use a, we use a behavioral definition because it's like how are you going to tell whether the person's engaged? Basically, there's the core job, and then there's these other things that people do in the workplace that are either part of team behavior or being a citizen of their organization. Well, things so that they it's do. It's an involvement. It's not just the length of your tenure. It's what you're actually yeah, the way you're yeah, behaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I look. I we look at you know people are engaged if they do more than fifty percent of their activities out of their core job. Oh, okay. So you could actually, you know, metric it. So, okay. and we actually have a way of looking at people. We we have an energy metric that can, we can ask people how energized they are by their work on a one to ten scale, and oh, that okay. predicts turnover, productivity, profitability. This is a woman who's been doing ten years of research on this at University of Michigan. So we're we're with one question, we can begin to 
have you figure out, you know, which group is not engaged or not energized. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about it, it's not a, a, a maximization scale. Like you don't want to be 10 on it because that's when you're burned out. What oh, you, you can't last. You want to be kind of in your zone and each and different groups of people and different roles have different zones. Like salespeople like to be higher zone. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe people who are doing um, thought leadership or kind of creating things want to be down more in five. Mm -hmm. So people set their own range and then what was really bad is when people are going up, down, up, down, up, down, just like a defibrillation in your heart. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're going gonna, you're gonna to not be there. That's the best indicator of people who are going to leave when they're wow. up and down and up and down and up and down. So what you're looking for is to stay in a zone. Mm -hmm. And so engagement we look at from a role-based activity. You know, how many of your behaviors, what part of your day do you spend in that core job and what are you doing outside that could be on a cross-functional team, it could be running the United Way campaign, things that are... That parts keep you alive yeah, in the job yeah. if you want to... So it isn't just how do you feel, it's what are you doing. Okay. okay. Um, I wanted to, I didn't want you to, we have just a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk just a bit about leadership because I okay. know you know so much about that. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about what makes a good leader? I mean, maybe somebody's watching and, and thinking, you know, I might want to be a manager of managers. Are there certain characteristics or a way to evaluate that somebody is, that the company is heading in the right direction? Is there anything you can say about it anyway? <laughs> I think if that a, isn't the question, no, you want to say anything. That's a, <laughs> great, that's a great question, Steve. I guess what I would like to talk about is Global the leadership. question, yeah, the question is not the models that we've had, because I think if we keep going back to those, we're kind of in the rear view mirror. The, the kinds of things people are asking us to develop is what, what can we do for the emerging leader, the person who's going to be a leader in five years? How do we prepare those Ooh, people? How do, we, how do we prepare a person to work in this global, virtual workplace, multi-generational, multicultural? That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and I mean, some of those skills, uh, mostly it has to do with how do you be strategic? How do you see the big context? How do you how do you help people sort out and make hard choices? How do you use like how do you focus on core things, which is the center of the business, and how do you make things that are how do you think how do you how do you we call it agility, where you can be core and you can be at the edge at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you go you go out and you look at something futuristic, but then you come back and drive the business results. So uh, leaders are going to have to be able to do that very smoothly. And so how do you how do you make begin to help people do that? And I still think it'd be huge being able to deal with all of these different yeah. people uh, that are so different than each other. That's going to be a skill that you have to know all the different cultural and on the I phone. Think, and on the phone and too. And on the phone. When I'm talking to Switzerland now on the phone, I have to like, you know, work in a different way because there I'm going to have to stop. That's you know fine. we're out of time. Okay. Uh, we've just scratched the surface. You're going to have to Good. come back again. Thank you, Steve. If, if that's it was okay fun. Thank you. thank you. I'd love to. And thank you for watching You're Hired. If you have any suggestions for us about this show or questions about jobs and careers, feel free to email me at steve at bayareacareercoach.com. Again, that's steve at bayareacareercoach.com. And please check out the website. We got the 12 keys to getting a great job, right? And we've mm -hmm. got the connections to everybody that's ever been on the show so people Good. can contact you right. and find out about Lee Hector Harrison. Okay. Uh, also, you can sign up for the uh, newsletter. That's all at www.bayareacareercoach.com. Again, it's at www.bayareacareercoach.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time on You're Hired. And thank this you for fun. being this on Your Hire. Thank you, Steve. Gosh, we just I know. We have could, such we could a wealth of knowledge. We could talk all, a lot of things. You know, the two things I would uh -huh. say to a manager is, one, don't just tell me when I'm not doing this.